Florence. Hello. Starting off with the economy, it's getting a lot of uh, attention in the French press and the minimum wage particularly. Absolutely. It's on the, the cover of uh, Liberation, the left-leaning newspaper. Salaire minimum, symbol maximum, so mim minimum wage but maximum symbol. It was one of uh, François Hollande's campaign promise to increase the minimum wage and today he's going to announce just by how much he's going to increase it. But the figure that's been uh, circulating has been that, it is, that it's going to increase by about 2%. Uh, now there isn't unanimous support uh, for that figure, including among the, in the le within the left. A lot of people say that that much of an increase will be uh, futile and ineffective. But in their editorial, Liberation says that any increase is, is symbolic, uh, because for them, uh, the uh, this minimum wage is really the left returning to their stomping ground. Because under uh, Ni President Nicolas Sarkozy, the minimum wage was only changed according to ob objective variables like inflation, whereas according to Liberation, the socialists now have a chance to reestablish uh, so social justice with, with what they're calling this helping hand, a coup de pouce in French. Uh, they also say, however, that uh, any small increase in the minimum wage is going to cost a lot to the government. And so it's also symbolic about uh, just how little room for maneuver François Hollande actually has. And they're divided over the impact it could have on unemployment. That's right. Now, there are some papers, for instance, wonder if this could have a negative impact and increase unemployment. We're going to take a look at uh, Vaminuch, which, which wonders, could this be a harsh blow for employment, but others say that a 2% 2 increase is just not enough. For instance, here on the cover of L'Humanité, the communist communist newspaper, excuse me, they, uh, they argue that the minimum wage should rather be 1,700 euros a month before taxes. Uh, it's currently at about 1,400 euros before taxes. And they said that it's not only necessary for workers, but it's also possible. And they say that uh, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't demand too big of an effort on the part of, of, uh, of employers. Uh, all they would have to do is shift their resources from capital to wages. And the overall budget is getting a lot of attention too. That's right, because uh, yesterday Prime Minister Jean-Marc Ayrault hosted a seminar with ministers uh, where he uh, outlined harsh belt tightening measures. And this is on the cover of Les Écoux, the, uh, the Business Daily here, where it says the government spending is going to be frozen for three years. And the Business Daily points out that these are, uh, measures are just as harsh as those that uh, the former Prime Minister, François Fillon, had announced. And the government this time can't count on reducing staff. So what they're going to have to do is different ministries are going to have to cut back on their functioning costs. And uh, also, the government is going to have to reduce how much it invests in certain regions. And so the plan is to try to uh, save several billion euros within the years to come. Now, Nicolas Sarkozy lost out to François Hollande almost a couple of months ago now, and the papers are looking back at some of his policies. Absolutely. It seems like the right is starting to go have, do some sort of a, an inventory or take stock of his mandate. And in fact, Les Écou, uh, calls this an economic inventory. Uh, it seems like the UMP party is looking at the good, the bad, but also the ugly parts of Nicolas' uh, mandate to try to build a strategy against the socialists in power. For instance, Les Écou points out that good points of of uh, Nicolas Sarkozy's mandate was that he increased competitiveness and lowered taxes, but however, he was a little less good on social issues, perhaps. And Le Figaro uh, also talks about this inventory and says that it's a tricky thing to do without damaging Sarkozy's um, image. And some ministers have already started speaking out against him, especially because of his presidential campaign. A lot of people were upset about the fact that he flirted, perhaps, with the uh, the far-right party. And the UMP leader, uh, Jean-François Coupé, um, is, is, he's against this kind of washing of uh, dirty laundry in public. And according to Le Figaro, he's going to need to find a way to channel all this into something positive. Now, one of the policies of his that was particularly controversial was the tax shield for, for those who are incredibly rich in France. And the Parisien is looking at that. The Parisien has it actually a very exclusive uh, in investigation into this. They, they try to figure out what the real cost of this tax shield uh, was. Uh, now, this tax shield won wanted to limit the maximum amount that anybody could be taxed to 50 percent to try to avoid super rich people fleeing abroad. Um, and according to their investigation, it represented a loss of income uh, for the state of 3 billion euros. Now, it's important to note that this was repealed back in 2011. 
All right, we're going to finish off with uh, Burmese opposition leader Aung San Suu Kyi. She's obviously on a European tour, and her next stop is France. Her next stop and the last leg of her trip is here in France. She's going to meet with uh, President François Hollande here in Paris today, and she'll be here uh, until Thursday. It's, as you said, the final leg of her European tour. She's been greeted like a superstar all along the way, and there's an article in Libération that comes back on her trip and the challenges that await her when she returns to Burma. She's been greeted like a superstar and met superstars. She met Bono, didn't she? All right, thank you very much, Lawrence, for running us through the French newspapers. You're watching live from Paris. Coming up after the break, 